Thank you. It's great to be able to come and speak to you this morning. So, um, as, as I said, my name is Mark Billinghurst. Um, originally, until last year, a year ago, I was living in Christchurch, New Zealand. And I don't know how many of you have been to Christchurch, but it's a very beautiful city. So this is Christchurch. It's, um, some people say it's the most English city outside of England. And of course, because we're an English city, we have a beautiful a cathedral in the middle of downtown Christchurch. But um, six years ago, an event happened that changed everybody's lives in Christchurch. And at 10 to 1 on February 22nd, we had a huge earthquake. And so the cathedral that used to look like this uh, now looks like this. And um, so there was um, a lot of destruction in the city. And uh, one of the buildings that, com that collapsed was the PGC building. So this is the building the day before. This is the building the day of the earthquake. And unfortunately, when the building collapsed, there were people that were trapped inside the building. So uh, uh, very soon after the building collapsed, uh, emergency services went in. And one of the people that went into the building was a guy called Matty Lovell. And this is a picture of Matty Lovell climbing up the roof of the building, which is now the wall. And they had to dig a hole in the, in, in the roof and go down into the building and then he was able to pull people out of the building um, from the collapse and save um, some people's lives. So you can imagine if you are on the scene of the um, earthquake and if you're the uh, person um, who's running the command center and trying to uh, help Maddie as he's inside the building, then um, you might want some technology for remote assistance. So you know, how could the expert outside the building help the first responder who's inside the building be able to um, do his job? And so over the last few years, um, there's been a number of wearable AR systems being developed. And, and on the show floor, in fact, you can go and see some of those systems that typically have a camera on the head and they can stream live uh, camera views back to a remote person. They provide some support for remote annotation and information display and maybe some sensor feedback. So using this technology, you, so the person outside of the, um, the demolished building could have some understanding of what's happening inside of the building. And as I said, there's many previous examples. So um, here's some pictures of the HoloLens showing Skype, um, uh, Scope AR showing um, remote maintenance, and uh, just at the conference here, um, before I announced the Project Chalk, where you can annotate on video. And these oftentimes will show view sharing and remote annotation and virtual video conferencing. But many of these have some limitations. So one of the limitations is that typically the view is fixed to the sender. So you have a camera on your head, and wherever the person looks, that's what you see. You can't see somewhere else because the camera's on their head. Um, oftentimes, they have few communication cues. Uh, the person outside of, of the, um, uh, the remote person oftentimes has limited spatial understanding and limited situation and awareness because all they can tell is what the person's sending from their side. So in our research, we're trying to look at how we can go beyond this, how we can basically do Project Chalk 3.0 or, or 4.0. And so today, I want to talk a little bit about that and especially look at three different um, uh, ways you can uh, collaborate. One is through uh, sharing attention, and this is through using uh, implicit communication cues. Secondly, through um, sharing uh, views and allowing people to see not just what you're looking at, but all around you. And finally, to capture and share whole spaces as well. And these uh, three areas really fit into a larger research focus of our lab, which is, a, which is an, a, on the combination of these three trends in computer interface technology. So there's a big trend now in towards natural collaboration, towards technology that can capture experiences, and towards technology that can help understand what the person's doing. And the combination of these we call um, empathic uh, computing. So this is basically building computer systems that can um, let you see what other people see, hear what they hear, and have some understanding of what they're feeling. So um, last year, we developed a small project called the Empathy Glasses. And this project uh, combined together three technologies. One was the, uh, an eye tracker. The second was the Be Epson um, see-through AR display. And the third was a special pair of glasses called the Effective Wear Glasses. And basically, these three technologies allowed us to share eye gaze and face expression with somebody who was remote. So just to talk about the effective wear glasses, these are, you know, with cameras, you can recognize your face expression. But if you've got a wearable system, you can't really have a camera on a stick that's looking at your face. So what we did in this case is we built these glasses that have small photo sensors on them, and they can detect the distance of the skin to your eye, the glass frame. And so as you make a face expression, um, you can recognize the expressions. So with this technology, we combined it together, and we allowed us to now use um, eye gaze uh, sharing and remote collaboration. And this is really important because it changes the nature of collaboration. 
So now when the remote person is, is talking to the person who's in the building, um, they, you know, typically they'll say something and the person in the building will say something back or, or do something in response to that. But in this case, we know where the person's looking and so we can know whether they're paying attention and whether the focus of attention is on us. So here's a video of it working. You'll see um, all the stuff on his head. Uh, the task is to arrange some blocks in the picture. So the person on the right is the remote person, the person on the left is looking on the desktop and getting the, the data stream to the desktop. So on his desktop he basically sees um, the, the green dot here is the dot where he's moving and the red dot is the dot coming from the eye gaze. So as he tells the person to move a block over by using the green pointer, he watches to see if the, the, the red dot follows and that tells whether the person's paying attention or not. We also have a heart rate monitor and a face expression monitor as well so we get some um, non-verbal cues coming back. And what we found by doing this is that by sharing gaze information to the remote person and, and by sharing pointer information, they felt a lot more connected and uh, felt like they were able to uh, communicate more clearly than if you didn't have that. And as I said before, the simple act of sharing the gaze changed the nature of the remote collaboration because now the remote person knew exactly where the other person was looking and could tell if they were about to do something wrong or if they weren't paying attention to them or whatever else. So that's a simple example of a um, system that shares um, uh, emotion. Uh, I want to talk about a system that shares views right now. So um, about two years ago we bought a system called the Social Panoramas and the idea was to be able to capture and share social spaces in real time. So if you have a Google Glass display on your head or some other head-worn camera system, you could imagine you could pan around and you could capture a still image panorama of your surroundings. And then you could share that panorama with a remote person and the remote person could then look around a different direction from where you're looking. So that's basically what we built. You have a Google Glass here, you capture a panorama, you share it to a remote, remote person, the remote person using a, a tablet, they can now annotate on the view and send the annotations back to you. But because they've got the panorama, they can look at different areas where you're looking as well. One of the challenges with this is to make sure that both people know where they're looking. So in this case, you can see in the right-hand corner, this is the Google Glass view, there's two rectangles, a blue one and a red one. These show where both the people are looking. So if they're lined up, it means they're both looking in the same direction. If they're separated, it means one person's looking 90 degrees from the other person or something like that. So you can tell whether your partner's looking at it with you as well. So this is a video of this working. So my student is um, going down to the uh, lake and she's going to co connect with her friend who's at work. And her friend has a tablet, so um, she sends the panorama over and then the friend can move the tablet around and look at different parts of the image and um, draw on the image and send the drawings back to her and, and communicate like that. Using the Google Glass, you can also draw as well using the touchpad, so there's bi bi-directional annotations. So this is her in Google Glass. And this is what she's seeing. You can see the red and blue. So now they're looking in the same direction because the blue dots are lined up with the red dot. Now he can use his fingers to move a point around and he can start to uh, draw a bridge on the river and tell her wouldn't, it wouldn't be great if we had a bridge that was um, over there. So this now means that we can look in different directions from where the person who's on the site is looking because we have a panorama. But you'll notice, of course, one big problem with this is that we're using a static image. And so that's not very good if you have some sort of dynamic scene happening. So we updated this uh, just a few months ago to a new project called Shared Sphere. And this project has a person wearing uh, two cameras, a, a, a 360 camera and a high-res um, normal uh, RGB camera. And the 360 camera view is streamed to another person who's in a VR headset. So now instead of having a static uh, panoramic image, we have a live 360 image. And the person in the VR headset has um, the uh, leap motion on the headset. So when they put their hands in front of their face, we can capture their hands, we can send it back to the person um, who's got the AR headset on and they can see virtual hands floating in front of them. So you can see these hands floating in space in front of you. And of course, again, it's still very important to know where they're both looking. So you can see the red box there. The red box tells the person who's looking at the 360 view where the, um, the AR user's looking. And the green box tells the AR person where the other person's looking. So this is kind of our system set up here, and we'll show a video now. So this is live streaming, so now of course if anything changes in the scene, the person sees it. So this is the, the view of the VR user who's got a live stream video, and that red rectangle there is coming from, um, is showing where the person in the AI headset is looking. And inside the rectangle we texture map a high resolution image from the uh, 2D camera. And so you can see these, uh, and this is the AR user's view, so here's the, uh, uh, the green rectangle showing where the other person's looking, and they can see these hands floating in space to help them. Um, 
one of the challenges is when you turn your head around, the 360 camera view uh, rotates. And so we had to correct that by using an orientation sensor. So this shows that here. And now um, you can see this arrow here appearing, telling him where the other person's looking. So if, you, if you're not lined up, you can now look down to their view. And so now what he's going to do is he's going to tell this person to move some fruit on the table. And so you can tell him he's, he's got a, he's a virtual hand pointing there. So pick up the apple. And now he's going to go and grab the apple and start picking up the apple and um, moving it um, around. So the great thing about this is that it sh it's sharing a live 360 view. And so you can easily imagine this could be something you could use in the earthquake example where the person's inside the building streaming video back out. And the commander's saying, oh, you don't want to go through that direction because that looks pretty dangerous, but go this way and use gestures to help him guide through the space. But that's, um, of course, the 360 video. It's not the geometry of the real world. So th the last video I want to show you is that more, more recent work we've done um, called Mixed Space Collaboration. And the idea with this is that you know, sometime in the near future, you'll be able to walk into a room and using a device like Google Can Tango or the occipital bridge hardware, you'll be able to quickly scan the room around you and within a few seconds make a 3D model of the space you're in. So you can imagine that you, you're in the earthquake, you go into this uh, collapsed building, you scan the, the, the room you're in the building, you send the 3D model back out of the building, and now the person who's out of the building goes into the VR mode, and they can walk into a copy of the room that you're in. So this is a, shows a collaboration between a person who's in AR and a person who's in VR. On the left is the real room in our lab. On the right is a, a, a copy that we made. Um, and now uh, we represent both people by virtual um, cues. So the, the users, again, wear the uh, VR headset with the leap motion, or in this case, the HoloLens, again, with the leap motion to capture the hand positions. Um, they both have room scale tracking, of course. And then both of the users are represented by little virtual floating heads. And there's also floating hands as well. So if I'm in the AR view, so if I'm in the, if I'm in the real world, I can look around, and beside me, I'll see a head floating around, which is the person who's in the VR space beside me, with some hands. And if the person in the VR space starts walking around, then the head will walk around to wherever they are in the real world. The other thing that we do is um, we want to do something you couldn't do in the real world, which is show where the person's looking. And so on the far right-hand side, you can see we have these view frustrums. So these are, uh, these are virtual pyramids that come out of your face that show exactly what the person is seeing. So now I don't have to look at the person's face to see where they're looking. I can just see this big pyramid that tells me what they can see. So here's a video of this working. So you can see the two environments. Um, this is now me in the AR view looking straight at the person who's in VR. And I can see their, their head there and the view frustrum straight towards me. This is the VR view. So that's the virtual copy of the models. And you can see our hands floating in space. And um, again, you can see the view frustrum as, as well. So we have these good nonverbal communication cues. We built a little game um, where you can, uh, the, the goal of the game was to try and find blocks together. But each person only had half the information. So they both had to try and find the same block. And when they found the same block, they could move them around. So this is my view um, in VR. And the AR users beside me looking at the right block. And you can see the people collaborating uh, together. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, of course, now we have a virtual copy of the real world. And because the virtual copy of the real world, you can do some things that you can't do in the real world. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could make myself really big and, and like, 20-foot-high giant and look down on the scene. Or I could make myself really small and shrink into the scene and, and walk around. Um, is that two minutes or two minutes? Okay, great. So let me show you a video of this working. So you can see here um, on the uh, left-hand side, is the person in the VR mode. And they, they've got a little app um, where they can drop blocks down. So the right-hand side is the AR views. Now what he's done is he's changed himself four times as big. And now he can look down on the scene. So if you were um, a commander trying to look at um, what 20 or 30 people are doing in a building, maybe you want to have, re be, have a really big view so you could look around. And now what he's going to do is make himself really small so he can now shrink himself down and go um, and look in the small parts of the scene. So because it's a VR, you can do some things that you can't do in the real world. And uh, so maybe, you know, if you're doing a search and rescue type task, maybe if you've got a 3D model of the scene, you want to look into the nooks and crannies, and so you want to have somebody be really small and look around. So you'll see that now. So now he's really small. And, of course, he sees the AI user now as a big person looking down on, on him. So just to finish up, um, what's next? So um, there's a number of technology trends happening, um, you know, advanced displays, uh, space capture, natural gesture interaction, uh, robust eye tracking, emotion sensing, and you'll see some of them on the show floor out there today. And in many ways, the combination of all these technologies together 
um, allow you to create what I call empathic tele-existence. I can now put myself inside somebody else's body and have some idea of where they're looking and what they're feeling and help them perform a task better in the, in the real world. So of course at the beginning of this talk I talked about um, how this might be helpful in some sort of um, remote um, emergency um, application, but there's many other applications. You could imagine sports training or um, uh, tourism where you have somebody doing some crazy uh, bungee jumping and you can now be inside their body, um, remote meeting support and so forth. And of course there are many directions for future research. How do you um, measure the quality of collaboration? How do you scale this up so you can support dozens of users rather than two? How do you um, build um, novel interaction techniques? And that's what we're working on in, in my lab in, in the university. So just to finish, what I've shown you today is how you can use AR and VR together to enable new types of mixed reality conferencing uh, that lets you share attention, uh, share the view, and share 3D spaces. Um, there's all, and together, these uh, represent a trend towards empathic computing that lets you share what you see, hear, and feel with other people. And of course, there are many directions for future research. And would love to work with you on some of these ideas. So if you want to get in contact with me, here's my contact details. If you email me, I'm happy to send you all the slides I just showed you with the videos um, as well. And unfortunately, there's no time for questions, but you can also email me your questions or, or, or Twitter or tweet at me, and I'll happily to answer your questions over um, Twitter as well. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you.